Welcome to the UAC's guest lecture series. I'm Yaji Lee, and I'm the MC for today's guest lecture. I hope everyone finds today productive and special. To make your day more meaningful, we have a very special guest in this room right at this moment. Everyone, let's give a big hand to Kayla Hill. Uh, 쿠팡에서 은 uh, 케일러입니다. Uh, 저한테 왔어요. 군대 uh, 잘 uh, 몰라요. 그래서 uh, 오늘 용어 uh, uh, 말해요. Right, sir, 말합, 말합니다. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, thank you for coming um, to, to to learn a little bit about Kupang and how I'm back here. Uh, and thank you for the warm introduction. And to James for helping organize this situation uh, and everybody for uh, all the great uh, collaboration. What I'll talk about today, I want to I structure today in a couple of parts. I'll talk about um, what Kupang is doing right now. I'm sure, how many people here use Kupang? <laughs> All of them, just to shoot it. Uh, any while I burst? Wes, right? Because you use your your hand. One day you become your own uh, operator. Uh, we hope. Uh, so yeah, uh, going back to um, just a little bit about my my career. And I'll struct I'll structure it with uh, uh, a conversation around coupon and what we're doing, but also uh, what is retail media, which is what I do and why I think it might be interesting to you guys as you think about uh, your, your, your future after university in Utah. So why I came to, to Coupon in the first place, I had done this eight years at Amazon um, in a variety of roles. I worked in uh, London mostly, but in New York, Madrid, in Paris, in Bangalore, Tokyo, uh, building in this sort of, this is what we call now retail media, uh, business for Amazon at the time, and we we didn't know what it was going to be, and I'll, I'll walk through that. But um, it, it's a uh, coupon as it, it started, especially getting closer to IPO. Um, it realized that it needed a profit engine for the company, and and so they decided to create their own advertising business, and that's when the likes of me and a couple of other folks from Google uh, joined, and we've been building this team. I saw James before, uh, as we were walking over here from dinner, uh, my team has grown just in my 18 months here. I've hired, uh, 250 people, I think just in the, the business side of our advertising group, we're, we're hiring like crazy also in the tech and product sides as well. It's a, it's a hot uh, area of advertising. Uh, and this is, uh, the, the bookend between, you know, between Amazon, you have coupon on this side, which is you know, exploding where I was before Amazon was Microsoft, um, which was and, and is an incredible company, but the part that I was in and advertising was not. And so this was, if you've ever heard of MSN, uh, that's where, what I was doing. And in fact, that's what I spent a year or my last year at Microsoft to undoing. So I was tearing that business apart, uh, canceling contracts with NBC, other um, players as, as Microsoft pivoted away from advertising. So I went from the lows of like seeing the business get destroyed and disrupted, uh, to the highs of building a, a, a new, a new business. And, and that's going to be the, the big theme. I think of my, uh, conversation with you today is, is disruption and change and why I think education is at the core of, uh, everything that we need to be doing to stay ahead of, of these disruptions. Um, the rest of my experience, um, I'll, 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 I'll throw it, obviously, you know, I'm at uh, University of Utah guy. Uh, so I, I went to school there from 95 to 2000. I got a degree in, uh, Spanish literature and, and language. And, uh, then I decided to stay and get a master's degree as well. So, uh, during that time, I did a lot of study abroad is why I was so excited to find out that the U is here in Seoul or in Chung. And, um, and get involved, uh, because my, I think what really changed my life with the university of Utah, uh, was the, the, the opportunities I had to study abroad. I studied in Venezuela, Costa Rica, 
I studied in uh, Madrid and or around uh, Spain. I know, and uh, to get a master's degree, I had to learn another language, left another language. So I went to Paris and uh, learned my French. And all that was because the University of Utah had uh, infrastructure to enable that. And then from there, I was able to get more confidence to, to do things like move to New York after university, find a job without, you know, uh, knowing how to find a job and moving to Europe and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that all it was born from that, that experience that added the university of Utah. Um, but it's a uh, lot of chance. First about coupon. So coupon now, if you look at our total user base in Korea, we're about half of Korea, uh, the population uses coupon, um, on a monthly basis, it's a little bit less than that, but over a first three year, um, around 20, 20, 26, 28 million people in Korea will buy something up, coupon. Uh, and do you guys are those people, uh, can tell me that, uh, um, but one of the things that we're, we're also building in, in addition to just having a, a retail store online is Ints business. Does anyone use Ints? Go find Ah, that's so popular. Okay. Why do you use it? It's fast. It is fast. That's, that's like kind of what Coupon does, fast stuff. Yeah. Um, Eats uh, is an interesting business. I also work on that. We don't monetize the needs traffic. Uh, so as you go there, you probably see ads just like you do when you're uh, shopping our app. And those are ads that my team um, sells into advertisers to connect um, those brands with you. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about kind of who those brands are in a second. The other big business that we're into Aside from all of the enablement business for our retail and ins um, folks with like the logistics, the delivery, I mean, all of that is owned and operated by Kufant, uh, which is a, a big differentiator uh, versus um, anyone else here um, because uh, they rely on third parties. We, we, we own everything to the last mile, uh, through the last mile. Um, so we can really set the terms of what the retail experience is. Um, the, the third piece, uh, though, is also on play. Uh, it's now the third most popular uh, streaming service in Korea and uh, keeps growing uh, in terms of leaders. Uh, and I had to ask, ask this question as well. Does anyone use Kumon Play here? Okay. More than Jeez. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was the same phenomenon at, at Amazon where, where Prime Video was part of just a Prime membership. Uh, but, but, you know, largely people, uh, they love the shopping experience, but didn't really branch out much, even though you held a three content. Um, while the wow membership is, is our main bread and butter. It's kind of where we get most of our business is from these most loyal shoppers. Um, it's a subscription, a subscription, um, sort of membership and it comes with all those other things included in it. Um, and so, uh, like I said before, my team is, uh, in the business of connecting brands with, with the shoppers. That's what retail media is. In the traditional advertising sense, it's the same you know, problem to solve, right? Marketers um, help connect brands with, with consumers. Um, in, in a traditional sense, uh, there are two kind of types of advertising. There's the, the brand advertising, that's what you see on TV, that's where they try to make you feel something about their brand, you know, Coca-Cola and Santa Claus kind of connection uh, makes you think of home, makes you think of warm things so that when you see that brand, it's not just a bottle of some liquid, it's, it means something to you, it, it, it inherits some sort of uh, idea, uh, cultural touch point, family touch point, et cetera. And then there's the uh, performance media, they call it, which is getting people to actually pull out their credit card or the bank card or the cash and, and the vibe. Um, so that's what my team mainly does because we're in a store environment. And so if you're there with the intent to buy something. And so we want you to help, you know, buy something. We want to help you buy something uh, as quickly as possible, as painlessly as possible. And hopefully it's the right brand for you. Uh, how did I get here? And I, I, I talked about this a little bit ago, a, a little bit ago when I was at Amazon. No. And when they recruited me, um, 
they talked about doing this advertising business and I didn't know what they were talking about because nobody thought of Amazon as an advertiser. Of course, as an advertiser to consumers to get people to use Amazon products, but not as a B2B advertising solution. And uh, so I joined because again, I was doing this Microsoft project that really uh, sucked, if you don't mind when I, uh, my language. And so I was excited to do something more about building than, than destroying. And uh, they, you know, they, they, they wanted to open the checkbook. Uh, there was a big meeting where Jeff Bezos sat in a room with all of us and said, uh, let's close your eyes. Imagine a world where Amazon has advertising and imagine a world where Amazon doesn't do advertising. We did it. It's Jeff Bezos. You do what he, you do what he says. And, and, and when we, we opened our eyes, um, you know, he said, I'll answer the for you. Okay. So you, you, you have questions still, we're going to do advertising. This is where the money is going to come from. That funds all of the innovation we're going to do for the, to the company. Uh, now it also happened to be that he had a company called AWS in his portfolio that he could also leverage for profits, but we became, um, you know, the core profit center. But at this time, this was just a pure idea. There was nothing, there was nothing going on. And I was trying to hire as quickly as I could, as many people as I could all over the world. And nobody would, would come work for us because we were so unknown in the advertising sense. Um, but we, we finally got, you know, internal approval to go for it. We started building some tech and this is what launched really the era of retail media 1.0. Um, and I'll, I'll be, you know, super, the credits, credits, uh, do where it's, where it's due. And, and Alibaba was doing some really great stuff in China as well to build this ecosystem, but core in the West, it was Amazon. This has been the number one thing that the, that my education has allowed me to or, or uh, to use it as, as a differentiate. Writing a concise memo is not easy. I'm sure the professors here challenge the, their the other students to try to write a one page, you know, argument. It's really freaking hard. And it takes a little bit long time to get good at it. And, uh, but it's a premium, premium skill in business. And if you can do that and not waste people's time with, um, you know, valueless sentences and paragraphs and analysis, um, you can go a long way. You can, you, you'll stand out, um, whether it's proposals or, uh, just new ideas for products or services, uh, clear communication is so important. Um, I put, um, that is last, this, this all cast always, always invest in training and learning. Again, this is comes, come from my experience of disruption. And if you're not preparing your workforce and really the same mode, I think a university thing, it's like, just, you gotta, you gotta uh, create a well-rounded workforce who are always learning what's new. Uh, if you don't, you're, you're, you're going to fall, uh, you fall quickly. I would be in collaboration. Um, so, um, the relationship building is really important, creating opportunities for cross-functional teams to work together, um, to create ideas, to challenge each other, to bring new perspectives into conversation. Um, it's been one of the, the hallmarks of everything I do. It might, if you go and talk to anyone who's worked with, with me or for me, uh, that's, that's something they know that I really enjoy doing. Um, I really believe that individuals, people who think of themselves as as the end all be all or the able fix that says year or some, um, it's to make it pretty far, but uh, the number be pretty, I, I mean, my inch good to see it better though, um, how to collaborate. You mentioned that you have a master's degree in the grade that no internal consulting. What do you think is that's more for a to decide to hire with the best of people for you to know what they're doing? Like you right. not knowing, like, what do you think? Should we try and um, look for jobs that we like because you don't have experience, or like, do you think we should go for the experience? Yeah, but the assumption there, I think, with the publication and what it's so the question was um, going back to the experience that I, I share about how do they agree in with it and language and like getting a job and coping without any sort of business or market or you know uh, background. But then trying to, then what we need to see is there, is that at odds with this principle of always hiring the best people. And the assumption I think it was in, in what you're asking is that the best people are, are trained on certain 
skills or they have the educational, the, the same educational background that you have on your, your job, uh, your profile. And I, that's, that's where I, uh, as a hiring manager, I don't look for people who are, you know, SNU, uh, uh, young say, or we got this, this guy, uh, universities. I don't, um, in fact, I've dropped that from, from a requirement. Uh, when I first started a coupon, that was a requirement. Like it was sky prefer. Like we're, you know, a student, right? I think honestly that requiring a university to call up is, is a bad idea. Uh, there's so many great skills, um, out there. I'm not saying that I'm not obviously talking that you should drop it with four. So, uh, um, I'll go do it. Go. Um, but, but it, it, you know, there, there are amazing backgrounds out there who don't have a, a college education. Right. And so for me, it's about finding people like hiring and developing the best people or people who have to, to work freaking hard, you know, they're going to work hard, um, who uh, are adaptable, flexible, critical thinkers, problem solvers, and, and just great communicators. The other question at this point, Anna? Yeah. Uh, what's I said you get as far as kind of we enter, um, the workforce and how to navigate kind of the ups and down, um, you know, a career path. I think that kind of it's just a hallmark of like the NC generations, but it's like for us, like I'm doing post COVID, the workplace is just a place that you are supposed to just endure. It's like, it's just kind of the dead or would it, you have to hustle 24, 7, 365, which I mean, you don't just fall by hard work to fight any innings, but you got to sell your soul in a way to just create it. You're talking to an ad guy. So <laughs> I cashed that check a long time ago, but no, I, it, you don't have to sell your soul. Um, I mean, I, I, you, I can, I can pull, pull out like the influencer story, right? So I meet a lot of people here in Seoul and people we hire who leave to go be influencers. I can't think of a job that's harder, like always posting content and always having to like, like, you know, filter and think about how, how to get people to like your stuff and share your stuff. And not only that, but like the, the pain of like disappointment every day is people don't like your stuff or share, you know, like that to me, that's like way more hard or harder to, to, to contemplate. Uh, and, and you could argue way more selling your soul than, than going to work for LG or Samsung, you know, so the last thing I wrote here is the opportunistic, um, and it kind of goes back to your question about, you know, do I, do I go for some of these things that are, that are maybe not in my correct plan. I know that we, we, we all have, a, you know, we all kind of have a plan. Um, and that's good. I think it's, 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 you know, something that gives you some sort of direction. Uh, but, but, but these plans, you know, it, again, things change and it's not in your control, these changes. Right. Um, and so, uh, don't be dogmatic about your plans. And when something maybe pops up and you're, you're, you're super happy in Seattle or wherever you're living in Seoul, but an opportunity pops up in Singapore or London or something, take a flyer. Why not? You know, go, go do it. It could be life changing. It could be something that, that, that sets you up. Um, same thing could be a change of roles. It could be simple as, you know, um, moving from one team to another internally. But when these things pop up, um, I've always found that, that rewards go to the brave who, who, who will go craft those things. And, and it's, you can't always plan those things. It's, it's somebody, somebody retires unexpectedly or somebody gets poached and there's a new role, uh, your manager quits and you can, you can raise your hand and say, I want that wool, right? And, and th those things all happen in your careers and it's just about, uh, not sitting back and being passive, but like wing it and, and, and hitting the badge. Oh, and I was, oh, so about my phone. Was it? Uh, yeah. And that's, um, that's, that's kind of where I wanted to, to lead the conversation today. Hopefully you, you've got a little bit of, uh, ideas from what retail media is and that it is a career opportunity. Uh, it's going to be the, uh, opportunity I think in Korea, um, the, you know, coupon right now is single digits, uh, of the total retail sector in Korea, uh, about 30% of e-commerce. Um, and so there's this upside 
And um, I tell you, it's just a, it's a tsunami of, of opportunity. Um, not that I'm pure recruiting for it's Kubmon, but it's one of those things where you look at what's hot as you look as you leave your university and you, just, you go into the job market. Where is there's where is the iron out? Uh, where is there going to be opportunity? And go go there. Not it's, it's learning. It's a little bit easier and go like that. Selling that new your breath. So that's the end of today's lecture. Please give a big hand for Kilo for his wonderful. <laughs>